Now, Mr. Baker, if you have issues with the photos I've taken, I'd suggest you take them up with your wife. Now, she's already left, that is. Can I help you? I'm uh, looking for Nero Bloom. Oh, we found him. I'm Barbara Lomax. Oh, my four o'clock. Yeah, I thought you weren't going to show. Well, the wrong name was on the door, so I wasn't sure if this was... Really should take care of that. Come in. Oh, don't mind him. Drop by any time. Have a seat. Oh, forgive the mess. I haven't had time to unpack since I moved in. That's all right. When was that? Two years ago. I received your letter, and I've given it some thought. And? Honestly, Mrs. Lomax, I suggest you drop this. But my husband is in some kind of danger. So you say. But all I see are habits. He stays out late, drinks too much, says very little to you. I've seen this before, Mrs. Lomax, and he's hardly in danger. What are you suggesting, Mr. Bloom? Nothing. Except your husband's a professional poker player, ma'am, and if there's one thing they're good at, it's bluffing. Even the ones they love. Charles isn't having an affair. If you're so sure, why you need me? Charlie hasn't won a poker game in three months. I don't know what it is, but something's gotten to him. He'd been doing so well, and then... Well, it's almost like he stopped trying. Sounds like his luck finally ran out. I thought after a while things would get better, but... Now he's nervous all the time, looking over his shoulder, waiting for something. Just this morning I heard him yelling on the phone and... Well, something's got Charlie scared. Really scared. And he's too proud to let me protect him. That's why I need you, Mr. Bloom. To be his guardian angel. To keep away whatever this is destroying him. I trust you can be that man. I charge $10 a day plus expenses. Or will I find him tomorrow around 11? <laughs> Where he always drinks his lunch. Bourbon on the rocks.
tomorrow for the Jimmy Durante Show and Richard Diamond, Private Detective, right here on your radio broadcasting channel. So the guy just left his watch in my cab. What floor is he on? He's catching last call in the bar. If you'd like to leave it with us, we'll make sure it's returned safely. Gosh, I appreciate that. But he left me such a big tip. I'd hate for him to lose track of the time. Mr. Anderson's on the fourth floor, room 456. Thanks. Mr. Anderson? Yes, sir. Right. Somebody call the police! Open up! Open! Well, I've told you once, Sylvester, and I'll tell you again. 
Bomex went into that elevator alive and came out dead. And you had nothing to do with it. I'm no patsy chief. Sif's wife hired me herself. What do you take me for, a sap? Listen, Seamus. I know you're fresh to the game, but let's get one thing straight. I ask the questions around here. Maybe I should just go over there and ask the body some questions. It's bound to know more than you. Knock yourself out. Chief, the body ain't stiff. His wallet's gone. He hasn't been there long. What about the room? It was under Mr. Anderson. Apparently Lomax was using an alias. You see, Bloom? Why get so upset? Lomax over here goes into the elevator, stops on one of the floors, and some guy mugs him. Simple as that. Robberies happen every day. That is baloney, Sylvester, and you know it. Really? Well, this is what I do know. It's four in the damn morning, and I should still be in bed with my wife. Really? What's his name? Get off me! One more like that, Seamus, and I'll throw you in the clink. Get this bum out of my face. You know, I think I always knew, I just didn't want to believe it. Who's this? Actually, I was hoping you'd be able to tell me. I've never seen him before. I asked you to be Charlie's guardian angel. To keep him out of harm's way. I trusted you to be that. I am sorry. I'm sure you are. But your services are no longer required. I have a husband to bury. Mrs. Lomax, with a little time, I know I can find... His killer? Is that who you're after? Is that who you're going to find? Why should I pay you to look in the mirror? Come in. Nero Bloom, old buddy, old pal. How you been? Been better. I'd hope so. Your latest client's been in all the news. Gambler killed in a hotel elevator. Right after a love nest rendezvous with a mysterious woman, nonetheless. Huh. Shame the coroner can't pin down the time of death, but... Says that Mr. Rigamortis had no food in his system. Boy, this guy getting cacked on your watch might be bad business for you, but it's good for mine. Going! You better have that story for page eight finished in ten minutes or so help me! What are you gonna do, Paulson, huh? I'd like to hear it. If you'd spend less time yammering my ear off, I might be able to actually get this thing done. Well, I'll hurry it up! Yeah, kiss your mother for me! All right, where were we? Off the record, I was wondering if you could tell me who this guy is. Hmm. Wait. Wait, I know that face. Nope. Nope. Ah, here it is. Steven Trotter. He's assistant to Oswald Finch, a multi-million dollar casino and nightclub owner. Strange guy. Spends a lot of time in his greenhouse. Must have a thing for plants. <laughs> now, what do you suppose he was doing with the recently deceased? I don't know yet. 
The my interest is peaked. Hmm, as is mine. And tomorrow, my readers. I said this was off the record. Oh, no, come on, not even a little paragraph? No. On page nine. No. Come on, fine. Fine. But only for you, Bloom, because you've always been good to me. You've always been good. Hey, wait. Take a paper. You've earned it. More than you know. See you around, Max. Cohen, where is that article? Keep your shirt on, huh? Keep your shirt on. So, Mr. Bloom, it appears you have something of a mystery on your hands. You could say that. Oh, but I do. Sadly, I regret that your case has very little to do with either Mr. Trotter or me. Even if your photography skills show otherwise. <clears throat> it, it's very simple, really. I... Forgive my assistant. He has a weak heart, and the news of Mr. Lomax's death came as quite a shock to him. Mr. Trotter here was giving Mr. Lomax some money. My money. You see, back in his day, Charlie was a great cards man. The best. But he was loyal to his sponsor and his sponsor alone. I begged him to join my pool of card sharks, but he wouldn't hear of it. Of course, when he began to lose, his sponsor dropped him, and he didn't have the funds to compete. I offered him help, but he wouldn't hear of it. Finally, he conceded, but only if I would give him a loan under the table. That is what you took a picture of, Mr. Bloom. Just one human being helping another. He seemed rather nervous for someone turning his career around. Mr. Bloom, I would be careful if I were you. Brood here doesn't like it when other people pick my geraniums. My word is my bond. I don't talk in fairy tales to you or to anyone else. Thank you for coming, Mr. Bloom. I hope we meet again sometime very soon. Brute, will you please show our guest the door? Is there anything else we can do for you? Okay, have a good day. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to talk to your manager, Mr. Merchant. Yes, let me get him for you. Look, I've already been through all of this with the police. I spoke with the desk clerk from last night. He says there was one call sent from Mr. Lomax's room. Really? Yes, to a room on the second floor. But I've checked with the registry, and no one even stayed in the room last night. Anything else strange happen? Strange. Strange as in how? Unscheduled guests, um, early checkouts, employees not showing up. Now that you mention it, there was one employee who didn't arrive for work, Harry Goldsmith. Had janitor, a large, quiet sort, no family. Always worked holidays, never called in sick. You know your employees well, Mr. Merchant. It is my job, Mr. Bloom, and if you wouldn't mind, I would like to get back to it. Of course. After I get Goldsmith's address. Miss Grant? Yes, Mr. Merchant? Could you bring me the employee file on Harry Goldsmith? Yes, Mr. Merchant. Goldsmith? Goldsmith! Goldsmith?
Evening, Bloom. How the hell did you get in here? I'm police chief, Seamus. I got the key to the city. Mind getting out of my seat? You're making it dirty. I talked to Lomax's wife the other day. She said she had hired you. What'd I tell you? But then when you couldn't keep your husband breathing, she dropped you like a hot plate of beans. Now tell me, Bloom. If Lomax's old lady canned you, why are you still sticking your nose where it don't belong? Curiosity, I suppose. Or maybe you're covering your tracks. You packing for a little trip? Unpacking. Sorry to disappoint. Let's hope that really is the case. Oh, and Blue, if I catch word that you're snooping around again, I'm gonna hunt you down. Then the only place you'll be sticking your nose is between bars. Have a nice night. What can I do you for? Bourbon, on the rocks. Coming right up. Is there anything else? I'm a friend of Charlie Lomax. Oh, yes. I'll tell Miss St. Clair you're here. But right now, she's busy. Really? Where is she? Say for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Showstopper herself, Veronica Sinclair. Yeah, she has that effect on everyone. Mr. Sampson. Miss St. Clair. Call me Vicky. Everyone does. I was just told you arrived. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Oh, no. In fact, I got your act. You sing wonderfully. Why, thank you. I, I'm flattered. <laughs> Where are my manners? Would you like something to drink? Yes, please. Sherry? So. What brings a man like you to my doorstep? Mutual friend. Really? Who? Charlie Lomax. Oh. Charlie. I'm afraid so. You know, I heard about it this morning. In the papers. He used to come in here all the time. He was one of my biggest fans. I just can't believe that he's... Dead. Well, yes. And to think, all because someone wanted his wallet, no less. That is one opinion. Oh. You have another? I think someone wanted him dead. Really? I never would have thought... Well, I mean that... You were there, Miss St. Clair. Don't deny it. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Sampson. I... Cut the Sampson business. You said it yourself. 
You read the papers. You knew who I was the moment I walked into the bar. I, I don't understand. I... Well, understand this. You and Lomax like to make whoopee at the hotel behind his old lady's back. Just like last night. Except last night, Lomax wound up dead. All right. All right. Charlie and I were together last night. But I didn't kill him. I don't believe you. I swear. Charlie was nervous about something. And he said he had to leave. By the time he was to the elevator, I had already packed up and gone out the back. I did hear a scream. I was too scared to... It wasn't until this morning that I even knew Charlie was dead, I swear. Then why didn't you go to the police? The police? <laughs> Wouldn't they love to pin this entire thing on Charlie's mistress? An open and shut case, they'd say. They'd lock me up and throw away the key. Charlie was nervous, was he? It seemed that way to me. Why? Do you think that means something? Maybe. It certainly gives me an idea of where I need to go. Are you all right, Mr. Bloom? Yes, I'm fine. I just need some air.
Careful. You wouldn't want to overwater. Well, Mr. Bloom, I didn't expect to see you today. Well, you know, Finch. It takes a lot to bring men like us down. Yes, quite. I see you brought friends. Afternoon, Mr. Finch. Sergeant? Well, what can I do for you gentlemen today? The other day you mentioned how you don't speak in fairy tales. Well, that is exactly what I have for you today. A fairy tale. Of course. Our story begins with the Ace of Spades, Charles Lomax. You see, Lomax was good at poker. Very good at poker. So good, in fact, you even called him the best. But this didn't bode well for you, Finch. Not while you were someone else's sponsor losing money on every game. It didn't bode well for you at all. Then you had an idea, but to complete it, you need the help of the Queen of Hearts. See, St. Clair here owed you something, most likely money. But when it came right down to the hard facts, it was probably between your plan or her life. So the Queen of Hearts seduced the Ace of Spades. But this doesn't end with happily ever after. You quickly started blackmailing Lomax, saying that you'd tell his old lady all about him and St. Clair if he didn't start taking a dive at the tables. So that's exactly what he did. He lost, and lost, and lost, until he finally couldn't stand it anymore. So Charlie Boy set up an ultimatum. He was going to tell the cops everything if you didn't pay up. But you don't like taking orders. I knew it was time to finish Lomax off. So you had one of your henchmen start preparing for the job. The Jack of Clubs. You see, Veronica had already arranged a secret rendezvous with Lomax in the hotel for that very evening. Brute's only problem was getting access to the hotel. And the answer he found was Goldsmith's Master Keys. There was only one thing left to do, and that was to keep Lomax from going to the cops that day. So you sent your most trusted assistant, the King of Diamonds. At the train station, Trotter gave Lomax some money just to buy a little more time so your plan would work that evening. What you didn't know is that I'd been hired by Lomax's wife. I had stayed well hidden for most of the day, but I guess I got sloppy and somebody saw me. When your goons told you I was nosing around, you figured out a way to use me as a witness. A witness whose testimony wouldn't lead to you. So the plan was set, and Lomax fell for the trap. He had no idea what he was in for when he met Veronica in their fourth floor hotel room. After a while, the chance arose, and St. Clair put a Mickey Finn in Lomax's drink. Which, of course, after a few seconds, worked its charms. Soon after, Brood arrived, totally inconspicuous in a hotel no, uniform. No, that's not how it happened at all. Charlie ordered his favorite foods from room service. Really? Then why didn't he eat any of it? Thanks to a friend of mine down at the paper, I discovered that the coroner found no trace of food in Lomax's system. He didn't order the food. And he certainly didn't order what he got next. You see, you and Brood stored away Lomax underneath the food tray, using it like your own Trojan horse. When Brute went down the hall, I didn't suspect a thing. I still thought Lomax was with you, in the hotel room. Things were going perfectly to plan. All Brood had to do now was sit in the hotel room on the second floor and wait for you to call when you were ready. After a few hours of cleaning up to mask your tracks, you made the call. Then you put on Lomax's hat and coat, hoping to fool me from a distance. You weren't sure if the disguise would work, but I took the bait. I didn't have a clue that the person walking into the elevator was really you, and not Lomax. All that was left now was the murder itself. You met up with Brood on the second floor, and he dumped Lomax in the elevator. And then he stabbed him. Twice. As the elevator doors begin to close, you tossed in Lomax's hat along with his playing cards. The two of you had done it. Lomax was found where he was supposed to be. Dead. In the elevator. This is when everything began to unravel for you, Finch. First off, Trotter had no idea you were planning on killing Lomax. He was in it only for the blackmail. Trotter had never wanted any part in murder and knew if you went down, he'd be going with you. His only choice was getting out, and that's exactly what he told you. But you didn't share his opinion, and sent Brute to tell him so. And then there was me, a simple two of spades, a nobody. You thought you'd throw me off the trail, but then I showed up at the nightclub. Brute tried to take me out the same way he had Trotter, but in the end, things turned out differently. In fact, Silvestri, if I'm right, there was a fire around 7 this morning? Well, yeah, on 8th Street. That's all well and good, Mr. Bloom. But where is your proof? Lomax's coat. Yesterday's paper shows a snapshot of Lomax dead in the elevator, without his coat. But when I took a picture of him entering the elevator, he had the coat securely on him. 
Coats don't just disappear off of dead bodies. Miss St. Clair here forgot to take it off when she threw the hat in the elevator, but by the time she realized it, it was too late. Like in a poker game, the coat had become the dead money. It was a clue left in the pot and there was no chance for anybody to get it back. I believe this is your card. Wonderful story, Mr. Bloom. Wonderful story. But you have no witnesses. You say Mr. Trotter is dead. But I say I just sent him on a year-long vacation because of his heart condition. And Root here was with me the last few nights. It's true, Finch. I can't prove where you or your heavy spent the last couple of nights. But I'm not looking for you two to testify. We both know you never meant to get mixed up in a crowd like this. You owed some money. Before you knew it, you were in too deep. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you actually started feeling something for Charlie. Maybe not at first, but after some time. If you help the police out now, I'm sure they'd be willing to knock a couple of years off your sentence. What do you say, Miss St. Clair? Well, I... Nobody moves, nobody dies. Miss St. Clair, if you'll join us over here. And gentlemen, if you'll kindly place your guns on the ground and push them over here. Forgive Brute's tight grasp, but you are our ticket out, and we wouldn't want the wind to carry you away. Well, Mr. Bloom, this has been quite the enjoyable experience, but I'm afraid we will now have to bid you adieu. It looks like you should have folded. You all right? Yeah. And you? Got my suit dirty. Come in. Well, Chief, what can I do for you? I thought you might want St. Clair's testimony for your files, so... She give you any trouble? Nah. She's just a good kid that got caught up in bad business. The DA said he's gonna go easy on her. Anyway, back on the beat. You know, Bloom, you're either a bum with luck growing out of your ears, or you're gonna be one hell of a detective. Which is it? I think you better get your ears checked.